Hey guys, it's Kaylee Bird. Welcome back to my studio. I am so glad to bring you part three today of putting on an art show on a budget because that's what I just did and it was a high huge success. So the art show just happened last week, but you know, editing and all this kind of stuff takes a little time. So we're on part three. Um, part one, of course, was making a flyer. Part two, frame making. And now number three, this is gonna be all the like real prep prep for the actual show. I'm gonna go through with you like signage and stuff that I made and um, actually like, you know, hanging artwork and, and what do you gotta do to get a gallery ready? You do it, whatever it is, right? So anyways, I'm really glad to have you. If you learned something today, please hit that subscribe button. And uh, yeah, follow along, let me know what you think. I would love to see if you, any of you guys are able to put on an art show using my tips and pointers and videos and all that kind of stuff. So keep me in the loop of your exciting night too. All right, Mwah. enjoy guys, thank you. All right, welcome to this space. As you can see, it is really big and has a lot of potential, but it also needs a bit of work. So it's okay, you know what I mean? I am willing to come in and roll up my sleeves and do what I need to do to have the most beautiful show I can. And sometimes doing everything even includes repainting the gallery wall the day before your show. You know what, I came in, it was a big mess on the wall and instead of being upset, I was just really grateful that the gallery director had the proper paint for me as well as rollers and things and I was more than happy to come in and prep my space and repaint that wall for them. If anything, I get to leave knowing that I left the space better than when I found it. Now, since I like to leave at least one thing to last minute at all times, of course, I figured I'd show you real quick how I am hanging some of these. So you can make a little mark about two or three inches from the top of your painting and then just use a staple gun to do two quick perpendicular staples with some nice hanging wire and bam, as long as it's a pretty light or small painting, you are good to go. Once we cleaned up the rest of the gallery and let that fresh paint dry, it was time to decide the order of the paintings. My friend Ellen came to help me hang the paintings. Now, just a quick tip, make sure that they are hung at eye level for a five foot six person because that's about average height for people. And you wanna make sure to bring a level so that your paintings are hung nice and straight. So I heard some excellent advice recently, and that was to do something special at your show, something memorable, something three-dimensional or interactive, or some reason why people would want to take pictures or something would stand out in their head. And what I did was I did take your own goddess photos. So after you see the entire gallery wall of goddesses, you can come up and you have your own mandala tapestry behind you to take a photo of and of course i had a little spot like here tag me and i had people taking photos of it all night long it was fantastic Now it's time for the really fun part, sign making, yay! So um, for your art show, you're gonna have different things like if you're selling prints, you wanna have an artist statement, this and that. So I'm gonna go through and show you all of the little signage and newsletter sign-up sheets and everything that I made. Now I'm not gonna go through step-by-step step and show you how I created each one. I've used the same program, Canva, that I used um, two videos ago when I showed you how to make the wonderful flyer. If you haven't seen that, pop down and check that out and then that will kind of show you the program. It's incredibly easy, it's free to use, it's the best. So now we're gonna go through and I'm just gonna go one by one and show you all the signage that I made. Hope you learned something. So we'll start with the most obvious signs first. If you're gonna sell something, you're gonna wanna sign for it. Now all of my originals are for sale, so I have each one listed out with its name and the details and the medium and everything, as well as its price. These will be cut very nice and neatly and placed along the wall alongside each painting. And I've also got some fun vinyl stickers for sale. And then 
my G Clay prints. Now, these are really high quality prints. Sometimes you'll go to an art show and you'll see prints for like 10 or $15. And these are not those. And so I decided that I was going to do a nice little write up about the quality of the prints that I offer. That way, when people are looking at them and thinking to purchase, they realize that they are purchasing a nice, high quality artwork reproduction and not just some cheap printer paper thing. Now I decided to make my show a bit interactive. Since I have a paragraph about each goddess on my website as well as links to who the women are in real life, I thought it would be really fun to highlight that as part of my show. So I went online and downloaded this free QR code and made this sign so that people could follow along in the gallery as to who each person was. I thought it was a really fun way to stand out from the crowd. And most importantly, you want anybody new to your show to know who you are and how to find you. Hello, I had three of these signs up next to the guest book and next to my prints and by the goddess stand. That way, no matter what, if somebody was enjoying themselves, they would say, oh, that's Kaylee Bird. I need to find her because I'm going to want to come to her next show and see her next painting that's coming out. It's so important. And even more important than people being able to find you again, you want to be able to find your most devoted fans too. So make sure that you have places for people to give you their email. Email is so, so, so key because you want to be able to communicate directly with people. I have my once of a month birds of a feather newsletter and it's a great way for me to interact personally with people and for them to see what's going on in my studio. And of course, if I ever have a promotion or a show or anything, it's great to be able to jump right in people's inbox. You definitely need some newsletter sign-up spaces. Now, of course, I also offer my custom Quenzel portraits, and so I decided to have a little table off to the side highlighting that so that people would know that they could hire me for all kinds of wonderful things. It's just a good way to cross promote yourself if you have more than one thing going on. Let's say you're a muralist. It's not a bad idea to have a few photos of some murals or something just so people know that you're multi-dimensional. So in a new page in Canva, I decided to make a few more signs that were vertical orientation. I really wanted to have my artist statement printed up and I especially wanted it for this body of work because it was intrinsic to showing why I chose the subjects that I did. But I think really any good art show should have some words from the artist up on display. People want to know what you have to say. They are curious about your voice behind the work. You're not going to be able to go around to each person and tell them what your motivations are or what you hope to gain from each and every piece of this show. So trust me, have your artist statement up. People will read it. They will appreciate it. I also made this fabulous little sheet for collecting any sales information along with people's emails, of course, because I wanted to make sure and send each and every person, whether they bought an original, a print or a sticker, a little thank you card, and to make sure to stay in touch because those are the folks who are the most dedicated. If someone will actually spend money on your art, you want to make sure that you have a way to contact them in the future and let them know what's going on with you. And last but certainly not least, you want to have a little sign-in book. I use this lovely handmade sketchbook that I have and put a few stamps in there and set it out by the front door so that people could sign into it. And you would not believe how fantastic it is when you get home and get to read all the wonderful notes about how much people love your show. If you're anything like me, you make a list for everything. So I went ahead and jotted down just how many I wanted printed out of each sign and I went down to my locally owned awesome little copy store and got these beautiful copies made. Shout out to Professional Image and Kaimu Key. Woo woo, they look great. Hey guys, so I hope you are learning a lot from this series. This is number three. I've got one more coming up. Next week is actually the night of the show. It was so, so amazing. But I just wanted to share one more little thing with you. The outfit, duh, you want to look good for your opening night. So. I just have to brag a little bit because look what I made the day of the show, right? Gray shirt, not so fast. Bam! What do you think about that? So I had this doily for like ever that I knew I was going to do something with and gray fabric and I literally whipped this up a few hours before the show. This skirt I actually made years ago back when I used to like 
travel and go to festivals and like little uh, street fairs and like sell all the sewing and stuff that I did. I did that for a few years. It was fun. But anyways, yeah, like it's it's fun if you kind of dress a little bit. Maybe if you can a little kind of hint on theme to what you're painting. You know what I mean? Like if you were to be painting more you know, classical figures, that kind of thing. If you had like a nice flowing dress, you know what I mean? Kind of reminiscent of Gre Grecian times or that kind of thing. Or like, um, you know, if you've got sort of a more polished feel, maybe you have like, you know, whatever, some extra fancy cufflings or something for yourself. You know what I mean? Like, but just try to kind of dance on point. I use a lot of doilies and um, like patterning and pretty fun goddessy things. So I felt like my little doily shirt would go right with it. And then um, necklace, yes. And then of course, out here in Hawaii, we get lay whenever we have these, um, you know, big events. So in some of the photos and stuff you'll see next week, I'm wearing like four big giant flowery lay, which was like, okay, the perfect complete. So anyways, I love you guys so much. I hope you learned a lot. Please hit subscribe if you did. And I will see you next week for part four, opening night. Wow.